Now we are joined by a very special guest. It is the writer and executive producer of Doctor Who. He is the boss. It is Russell T. Davis. That is. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank thank you. you. <laughs> Welcome to the Tony Studio. It is yeah. lovely to have you lovely here. Lovely to be Real here. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, as you can see from that film, Doctor Who has completely captured everybody's imagination and inspired people to write. Mm, yeah, and it, it's funny because when I was young, that's exactly what Doctor Who did for me. I used to write my own stories, I used to draw my own cartoons and comic strips. So it's lovely to see that continuing now. Now, we are joined by all of these lovely people. It is our writer's circle, and we've got lots of questions to ask you, haven't we, Bonnie? Yeah, so Isabel, do you want to go first? How long does it take to write one episode, and do you have to keep on rewriting it until you're happy? Oh, Isabel, that's so true. It takes it takes about a, a month to write an episode, but that's not allowing for the month, the month, the month, the month you've had beforehand to think about it. And then once it's finished, we keep rewriting all the time. Because rewriting something, everyone should learn this, I think rewriting doesn't mean you've got something wrong. You just keep on making it better. There's no such thing as a perfect script. It's never perfect. So you can keep on making it better and better and better all the way through. Interesting. Okay. Oh, what was your question? When you have guest writers, do they do all the writing or do you have to supervise and edit what they do? Well, they're, no, they're brilliant people and, and everyone gets script edited as they go along and that means when we all pile in with our notes, making a script better and better and better, like I was saying. But they have a lot of freedom. They're, they're, we don't even call them guest writers, we just call them writers because they're an equal part of the team as I am and, and we might give them suggestions and stuff like that but they have an awful lot of freedom to go and do what they want. It's a lovely job. And everyone's got that love for Doctor Who as well, haven't yes. they? Even the writers that come in. I've through. never worked on a show like it, but everyone is so dedicated to it. It's really? brilliant. Oscar, stuff. what is your question? What's the hardest part of writing to Doctor Who? Oh, the hardest part of writing Doctor Who is... It, well, it, to be honest, writing... And I hate saying this. Writing is hard work. And I, I hate saying it because if you're a nurse on a 24-hour shift, then you'd be going, shut up, Russell T. Davis. You know nothing <laughs> about hard work. But actually, you do sort of sit there on your own and you've got to get it on time and on budget and you've got to make it funny, you've got to make it scary and it is genuinely hard work, you end up exhausted at the end of it so my life is all. <laughs> <laughs> Ted, what's your question? Like Ted. Um, would you ever write um, the Doctor regenerating into a woman? Oh, good oh, question. That's a cheeky controversial one. <laughs> well I would, just because I think in Doctor Who anything can happen. It's, I'd hate to say nothing can happen. Not in a rush, not in a rush to write any sort of regeneration I have to say because we love David Tennant and he's staying but one day if we got the right woman, the right story, the right idea, and everyone thought it was a good idea, then I would. I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. There is a way in after all. Good question, that, Ted. Yeah, okay. Next question. question. Um, how do you think of all the monsters, villains and aliens in the show? I just sort of do, really. And, and I, think, I think it's very much like you do. I, I know that you, especially this in this circle, you write your own stories and they give your own monsters in your head and in a way I never stopped doing that it's you know if I asked you to invent five monsters right now you could do it you come up with monsters from planet X and absorbing monsters and robot monsters and things like that so so no you can do it so so that's all I do for a living actually and I think I think a lot of adults forget what they used to do when they were young and how they used to invent stuff and I just stayed like a big kid and never stopped <laughs> Brilliant. do you draw them do you draw them? I do sometimes I say yes yeah, Cassandra I, when I first wrote that, because that was very complicated, the, the thin plastic surgery woman, she was very complicated to describe on paper, so I drew that so, sometimes. Lovely. Hattie, what's your question? Are the Yetis coming back? Ah, the Yeti. I like the Yeti. The Yeti, an old monster from like, the 1960s, the abominable snowmen. No plans for that, I have to say, but if I thought of the right idea, then I'd love to. Oh, there you go, you've given him an idea. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Russell, for answering all of our questions. Thank and you, we Vicious hope... Circle. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, thank, they thank weren't you for your questions. <laughs> Did you enjoy that? <laughs> yeah, it was yeah, very good. Thank you. Pleasure, absolutely. Yeah, please stick around for a bit more. I, I will. <laughs>